Did you ever hear a woman say, I just had a good cry? I, I mean, I as a woman have had a lot of good cries. And there have been men in my life who have said, what the heck does that mean? What's a good cry? Well, I'll tell you this. This is going to be a little fun video. Maybe not fun, but probably encouraging and exciting to think, oh, that makes sense. So I wanted to give you a little information on the, the advantages of crying and tears. Researchers for many, many years have studied tears. If any of you is aware, cortisol is known as a stress hormone. So when we're anxious, when we're in a difficult marriage, when we're having tough stuff going on in our lives, our cortisol level raises. When you're angry, your cortisol levels up. And cortisol helps in one sense energize us, but it just can make us so um, tense. And, and if we keep our cortisol levels high for too long a period of time, it can really start harming us. So our goal is to, yeah, when it goes up during stressful periods, we want to bring it down. Well, what researchers found was that they studied tears and they studied tears from happy cries or I'm laughing so hard. I'm watching a funny movie that I'm crying. I'm outside in the wind and I'm crying. But when I cry tears for actual sorrow or grieving or during stressful times or hurtful times, they studied those tears as well. And what researchers found is that only in the tears that are shed during sad or grieving or, or tears based on emotion you, you contain cortisol. So let me kind of rephrase that. The body has a natural mechanism so that when you are going through difficult periods of time, stressful, tears actually help to expel the cortisol from your body. So that when you're done, you just cry and cry. And it doesn't have to be a snotty cry, although I've had some, a lot of those in my life. But sometimes when you're holding it in and you're, you're in a place where you can't cry or you're just and, and you feel it, but when you just finally sit and you let the tears fall, and you let them fall until they're done falling, you feel something afterwards. You feel cleansed. Tears absolutely are cleansing. I was teaching this during one of my segments of anger management many years ago, and because I worked for the Fleet and Family Support Center, I had military members, I had officers, I had enlisted, I had a lot of Navy SEALs. And I had this one gentleman, and he was required to come to the anger management class. And he was strong. He talked about some of the things he went through, but he kept this, this wall. And I talked about the fact that, you know, statistically women live longer than men. And I believe part of it is because our stress hormones come out. Men die of heart attacks more often than do women, though now that women are in the workforce at a significant level compared to decades earlier, that's increasing for women. But I also talked about this value of letting tears out. And I said, you know, when is the last time you cried? And many of the men, it was one of those, you could heard a pin drop as I talked about this. And for so many men, crying was a sign of weakness. And the last thing I wanted to do was tell these guys, dudes, just start crying now. It'll be well received because it won't always. But when I said to them, you're in this class because you're angry. Anger is a secondary emotion. That means anger is holding in or covering up another emotion that needs to get out. And if you can't necessarily express that emotion with words, you can express that emotion physiologically. I said, I'm not telling you to cry in front of your girlfriend, your wife, or your buddies here, the colleagues. I said, but to know that if you can find a quiet place and just be alone with yourself and let yourself feel the feels, does to make you any less a man. As a matter of fact, when we had good conversations, I said a real man is man enough to know that his tears don't make him weak. Any man can hold his tears in because he thinks other men are watching. But a real strong man is a man who allows his tears to flow freely. 
So as we were having this, I guess I don't want to say conversation because at this point I was the only one talking. And this was the last class. It had been six weeks. And out of the corner of my eye, I looked and this seal who had let us know that he probably hadn't cried. I, I'd be lying if I said I remember, but it was something like 20 years, probably 30 years old. I don't know. He sat there and all of a sudden I saw tears just, just coming down his face and he stared forward. And the guys around him, they knew. And they respected him and they let him shed those tears. Ladies, if you want your men to express themselves, you don't want to call attention to their tears. If your sons, dads, if your sons cry, don't emasculate them. Don't tell them that big boys don't cry. Let them know there's value in your tears. And I'm not going to tell you how to raise your son, but parse this information. Let the stress come out of you and you're going to be a much better woman. You'll be a much better man because you will no longer be responding based on a stress hormone that's built up and you just lash out. Let that hormone out. Your mind will clear and you'll be better in control of yourself, your thoughts, your words, your actions. And you'll feel a heck of a lot better. So just wanted to share that with you. A little helpful piece of information that we don't all know about, but it's really valuable when you do. So don't forget, you can still laugh uh, when you're watching that funny movie, but don't forget to give yourself time to let out the pain, the sorrow, the hurts, and the stress when you need to. I'm here for you. You know where to find me. Christine Bacon, the relationship doctor. Christine at breakfastwithbacon.com. Now go out and be a better version of yourself. God bless.